All right, really good. Well, you know, I think it's time we kind of roll into do a little tech notes, talking about some things that we can use in our classroom. What do you think? Sounds good. All right, here we go. All right, Dom, we'll go ahead. Why don't you kick off our tech note sessions? Okay, well, this tech notes is going to be a little bit different from the past because mine is more of a theme. Uh, the FID day that a lot of schools had kind of changed my thinking. We were talking about it earlier, earlier today. So mm -hmm. I'm not going to give any specific uh, tech tool because a lot of the tech tools I use on a flexible instructional day, flexible instruction day, I've already talked about. Um, I have students who some have very good internet connections. Some do not have very good internet connections. Some students have a strong internet connection, but because of the number of people in their house that are on computers, it sucks the bandwidth. So um, what I have done in the past on flexible instruction days, I always give and most of the teachers, all the teachers in my district for that matter, give students extra time to complete assignments. So I usually roll out something that's easy and doesn't take a lot of bandwidth, um, a review type game. I don't do ed puzzles because downloading and streaming video can, you know, kill the bandwidth in a household. I'll do, you know, like a, a, a Quizlet, a Quizzes, uh, Blook It, you know, the Kahoot, you could push out Kahoots and let them play um, on their own. You could assign it and they have a certain amount of time to do that, review game zones. I'll do things of that nature where the students, you know, review this or go in, we use Schoology as our LMS. Here's an assignment, like, you know, review your notes, answer a few questions, just kind of like self-reflect. And usually like the first, we didn't, you know, lock in it as some people did to the FID day today. We had just had the rain. But a lot of times like if it's truly like a snowy day outside, usually the first snow I'll put like a fun activity. You know, take go take you know a picture of yourself enjoying enjoying the the outdoor activities or doing something nice for a neighbor or helping someone out. And for the kids who don't like being out in the cold, you know, take a it's all take a school appropriate picture of what you're doing in the in the weather or take a school appropriate picture of how you're not enjoying the weather. You're staying inside, staying warm. And I've had kids, you know, some kids playing video games, some kids reading a book with hot cocoa, or you know, sitting there giving a grumpy face out at the snow because they can't go outside because it's cold and snowy and wet, you know, or, or people helping their neighbors. And so it's more of a theme that I do. Uh, let's the kids connect, get them online, you know, think about what we're doing in the classroom, maybe review something. Or in some cases, usually the first, you know, big snowfall, you know, have fun, enjoy the weather because they're kids. Even though I'm a high school age, you know, the kids need to get out and, be kids once in a while. A lot of times we don't let them do that. So, you know, review something, but then do something fun. Take care of yourself and let us know what you're doing. And they have a few days to turn that in. So the kids that don't have good bandwidth, they take a picture. Whenever they get the chance, come back into school, upload the photo, and we're good to go. Yeah. What, what do you have to discuss, Mr. Verna? Yeah, so kind of um, some interesting things. One thing I, I love, and I we've talked before, but formative. Um, just love this site. The fact that you can kind of search. I'll use it during my rotations. Uh, but definitely for what's nice about a fit day is you can have the kids, like they can have a paper, pencil, something, but they could just be recording their answers here. So you could just kind of real time spot check who's working, who's not. A lot of times when I go in and I create one. So let's say um, I'll just like go in and dig up. Uh, I, and the thing is you could do a search. So pull up a lot of different math stuff. So stuff that other teachers have already created. But let's just say I'm going to go ahead and put in this unit one test. Um, one nice thing is when I assign it, make it student paced, that I can actually go into these check boxes. And these are the classes I have in my Google Classroom. So I'm just going to say guest students. And in the additional settings, what I love to do is when I go in here, I want to make sure that that if I'm just doing this just to, to have them working on a concept, I want it self-checking. I want them to allow edits. So, but I also want them to know instantly whether they got it right or wrong. 
And so I love this feature. Again, I'm not trying to, like, it's not a, I got you, right? So mm -hmm. this unit test piece would be a practice piece if I was doing that. But I want it to be like, they got, they got what they got. Oh, it's wrong. Hmm. Okay, let me go back and double check that. Let me think about that. Let me figure that out. So a lot of times I'll have them tear some pages out of the book if we think there's going to be a fit day coming up. And then this will just be collecting the information. They're doing all the paper pencil stuff. They're just writing the information in there. So it's just that other part where they're getting that self-check piece. And then I can actually pull it up, see all of the, the students, and just kind of scan through and see who's done what, just to kind of eyeball. Again, because we do give them some time to make it up, but I don't really want to take four more class periods of them working, right? I'm not right. giving them, this is only going to take, you know, 10, 15 minutes. So, you know, just for me to be able to spot check and see who did or who didn't, sometimes it's a reminder email, you know, to them or maybe mom and dad. Um, but again, so that instant, and I don't want to show them the answers, especially after soon because I'm making this open-ended. All right, but maybe when I close it, then they would see the official answers. Hopefully, they'd have them all right by then. And then assign. Now, if it has a little star, these are the features you get if you have a paid subscription. What I just showed you, the ability to do that is for your free subscription. So the other thing is, now I know you talked about the bandwidth. So this doesn't take bandwidth into consideration. But I actually, at our board meeting um, in December, was sitting with uh, Patty Patty Duncan, who does a lot of work with Discovery Ed, mm -hmm. and she was talking about this newer feature where they kind of, um, you know, kind of looked at what Edpuzzle is doing and kind of pulled some features from there. So you mentioned Edpuzzle, but currently uh, Discovery Ed now has video quizzes. It's a lot pre-made and that you can go in and make your own from some of their materials. Again, you can search by content, by a keyword. You can change it by the grade levels. You can scroll through. These are already made. Uh, so when you go in and click in, let's say moon phases, and then, you know, you can scroll through, here's the video, and it goes through and just has the different questions that they were asked. Now, a lot of times when I'm, when I'm using these, again, the goal isn't the I got you. One, you know, I tell my students when I even roll these out, I said, listen, I'm giving you this. I want you to watch this. The content is important. But how many of you, and I'll say, how many of you have ever had you know, a, a video on and then the teacher will ask you a question and you zoned out and you had that brain fart moment. You're like, oh man, I, I zoned out. I didn't catch that. With these, the ability to go back and replay is huge. Oh, okay. I see that. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I missed it. Sometimes you got it. Sometimes you don't go yeah. back and replay it. And then you go through again. The content's more important than the grade, but I want to ensure that they're not zoning out the whole time. So it's asking that. You know, I'm not locking it out. They have another tab open, whatever. But it's just another neat thing. A lot of the school districts in Pennsylvania do have Discovery Education. It's just a, a new piece that I learned about that they have it the, the ready. Again, as Don mentioned, if the internet is a little flaky, it doesn't necessarily keep take that into consideration. But if they're able to do that, um, it's just a nice feature for you to have. And yeah. again, a lot of schools do already have the subscriptions. So you're not having to do anything extra. It's just something you already have available to you. So those would be like the main two that I really wanted to talk about that the ability to use that formative and to be able to pull in any kind of video stuff with the discovery ed. If you would look at the ed puzzle, you can kind of pull in more stuff off of YouTube, yeah. some other videos you might have. Um, but so some, some of the similarities just a little bit more flexible with the videos you're able to pull in ed puzzle as opposed to discovery. Ed. Yeah. And, and I like how you, let the kids, you know, check their work because that's one of the things I do a lot of like my reviews or I'm using either quizzes, review game zone, um, said book it. And I like that better than handing out a paper study guide from the standpoint and explain to the students, I give you a paper study guide. You fill it out until we check it. You don't know if your answers are right or wrong. You know, you can check with someone in your class, but if they don't have the right answers, and I know from teaching for so many years, they don't always have the right answers. Then they study, you're studying the wrong information. So when you use these electronic forms, I know some teachers, ah, yeah, it's not the best thing. If you set it up so the kids get instant feedback, they know if they're getting the answers right or wrong. They know if they're studying the information, what they have is right or wrong. It's going to help them in the long run because, you know, getting filling out a worksheet or filling out even an electronic thing and not seeing the seeing whether their answers are right or wrong doesn't do them any good. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they're, they're not able to, to formatively check their work and see, do I know, do I know what I'm talking about or 
do I need to spend more time? So I always like opening that option up. And, and even though, you know, a lot of our math books and stuff, they say, oh, all the odd question answers are in the back of the book. That turning of a page is just so tough for the kids sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> so you got to yeah, write it there, write it there ready that they're able to kind of see that right away. So definitely now. Um, yeah, so that's just, that's big. Now, you mentioned Look It. You mentioned the games. Just to throw it out there. We talked about this before. I forget what episode we talked about Gim Kit. But they mm-hmm. do have, they release their, sometimes they put a featured game in for free. So part of their free games, they have a snowball fight game. My students love it. What they really love is because when you're answering questions, you're building up the, the amount of snowballs you have. So I try to front load my, how many uh, snowballs I have because you, there's no option but to play the game as a teacher. So I'm trying to answer all these questions and get it. So they, you know, the, my, my one class, the, the second the second time we played the game, they ganged up on me, man. So be careful. <laughs> the teachers. Because I'm, I'm loading up all these snowballs, and they just started firing at me. So when I finally – and the other thing, they know I'm doing it because I'm projecting to the screen so they can see the game. So then when I came back into the game, I, you, you die and, like, respawn, die and respawn. It was in this infinite loop that for the 10 minutes <laughs> I had the game set, I couldn't even play. I kept dying, respawning, dying, respawning. So be careful. Find a find yeah. a nice little snowbank to hide behind, but the snowball game, the snow fight game, they love on the gim kit. So that's a, a free, a freebie for teachers that's going on for uh, at least this week in July. Nice, yeah. Review Game Zone has one of the games you can play is a snowball fight and sit there and you get the question right and you throw snowballs and kids throw snowballs back at you. I'll put it up on the the interactive TV in front of my room and and play and. The soccer game, I'm not very good at, but we'll play. And the kids get a kick out of watching me try to play the soccer game. And <laughs> you take, they'll take turns to come up and play. Mm-hmm. And then and the only other thing to mention is last week, I believe it was last week, was uh, um, Code, uh, Week of Code. Yes. And Code.org did have some new, um, I always love doing, they do have some new Minecraft pieces in there. So the kids can code on the website if they don't have the apps available to them. And Code.org. And Microsoft with the Minecraft EDU team have put together some worlds that you can push out and the kids can kind of go into. And and they're doing a lot of coding within the game of Minecraft. So some nice. definitely cool things there that I just throw in during my rotations that the kids could do something a little bit different because still that coding aspect, there's still that the, the program thinking and then how yeah. they're going through with that. It's It's, you know, the technical skills that they get from that. And it's a nice break from doing some math or doing some science just in that rotation piece. Yeah. So just have, some different options. Have you gotten – I know Tinker has a free code of the week, mm. um, T-Y-N-K-E-R. Right. Um, so I forward that out to our, our computer science teachers. You know, you could use it with any group. You have a week to complete it, I believe, maybe, maybe two. Um, but it's free. You don't have to subscribe to Tinker. They do have the fee uh, subscriptions. But this is every week they just throw out. You know, here's an email. Here's here's a, a theme for this week or for the season to do, and it's a great way. It's like an activity that they could do on a flexible instructional day, um, or as a break from regular curriculum, or as um, an add-on if you do like a choice board. That could be one of the rewards on a choice board for the students. Awesome. Oh, really good stuff. So we're like kind of piling on the, uh, yeah, I tell you, <laughs> putting it on late this week. So we'll we'll uh, make sure we uh, thank our sponsors and and help keep the lights on real quick. And uh, as we're rounding out the, the show, all right, here we go. P A C T and the P A C T Pod would like to take this opportunity to say thank you to our corporate council sponsors. Thank you to Classlink, Max Cases, Go Guardian, and Bloom. Thank you to Sam Labs, DRC, and Eduspire. We appreciate all these organizations partnering with PACT to help us to advance the education technology in Pennsylvania, which in essence helps students. We look 
forward to seeing you at PNC 2023. Thank you so much to the listeners. The ACT is a phenomenal organization because our members are amazing. Can't stress that enough. We're yeah. only as good as our members, and our members are unbelievable. Truly appreciate them. Very strong membership, very active membership, and that's good. Very much, very much. All right, Dom, well, you know, it'll be, uh, we'll have the January show. We'll be able to feature some of the PACT members who are going to be presenting at PE. 